Duin has sent me the latest version of their smooth smartphone gimbal, the 5S AI. In this video, I'm quickly going to go over what's new for this model, followed by a complete guide on how to use the gimbal. The first thing that I can tell you right away is that they've added some polish. The whole build has been beautifully upgraded. There's a nice use of translucent material that I think looks pretty cool. The grip feels a little bit nicer and the markings are more distinct. Overall, it just feels a little bit more pro than your regular smartphone gimbal. So aside from the revamped design, the main difference is the new magnetic detachable AI tracker, which can work independently of the Duin apps. It can face forwards or backwards, depending on whether you want to use front or back cameras. And this is how to use it. A red light means it's waiting for your signal. To start tracking, make sure the AI camera can see a face and then make the OK sign. The light goes green and the gimbal is now going to keep you in the center of the frame. And to stop tracking, just show the palm of your hand. To start and stop recording, make a V sign with your fingers. And the light flashes blue before recording starts or stops. And you can use this function with the native camera app or any other app that you might be using for live streaming, for example. If you'd rather not be in the center of the frame, position yourself and then make a frame gesture with your hands. It's a bit like that gesture that film directors make when they are composing a frame. The green light flashes and the gimbal now keeps you in this position. And it will remember this position until you use the same gesture again or until you power off the AI tracker. Now, if you want to use the AI tracking module, you will need to purchase the combo or the pro version of the gimbal. If the listed specs are anything to go by, the new model seems to have a slightly longer battery life. So the previous model was said to have a 24 hour battery life in standby mode. Whereas the Smooth 5S AI is listed as having a 26 hour battery life. You know, not while you're using it, but uh, if it's just in standby. We're probably not going to need 26 hours worth of battery, but remember that this gimbal can double up as a battery pack for your phone. So that extra battery life might come in useful. Both models have a minimum charge time of two hours, but it can take up to three and a half hours, depending on the conditions and the wattage of the charger. Other than the new look and the AI tracking module, the Smooth 5S AI is pretty much the same as the previous model with the same high performance magnet steel motors as before. Most gimbals are supported by an app. The Smooth 5 has three. There's two Zuin apps, ZY Cami and Starcam plus Filmic Pro. I'm going to show you how to use the Zuin apps, but I will not be covering Filmic Pro in this video. The ZY Cami app is more for general use and has various fun features like pano and dolly zoom. There's automated editing, probably more geared for social media, vlogging and family videos and that kind of thing. Meanwhile, the Starcam is like a stripped down version of Filmic Pro. So it's more for serious filmmaking, offering more complete control over exposure and focus, things like live analytics, the kind of stuff you would find in a regular camera. Before you start using your Smooth 5, you need to make sure you have unlocked all the motors. To unlock or lock the pan motor, you need to use this switch just below the motor. The other two motors unlock simply by twisting them. Normally, gimbals allow you to easily switch between a horizontal or vertical position for your phone. But with the Smooth 5, you need to decide when you mount your phone, because when the phone is horizontal, it's pressed up against the tilt motor, and therefore it cannot be changed. To set this, just rotate the clamp to the desired position. If you don't want the hassle of remounting and rebalancing, you could simply turn the gimbal 90 degrees. 
Obviously, this will get uncomfortable if you're holding it this way for a long time, but it's okay for a quick shot. These days, many smartphone gimbals don't require too much balancing, but the Smooth 5 does need to be balanced before use. The good news is that it's much simpler to balance than most bigger gimbals. To balance your smartphone in the gimbal, you need to use this arm at the front. Slide the arm until it's balanced. And if your phone keeps flipping over, you can adjust how high it sits in the clamp as well. And basically the aim is to get as close as possible because it doesn't need to be absolutely perfectly balanced. Now your smartphone camera is at this end, which means that any extras you mount will also be at this end. For that reason, the more weight that you have here, the harder it's going to be to balance. And if you have too much, at some point you're going to run out of arm. If at this point your gimbal isn't holding your phone level, you can try the auto calibration. First, place the gimbal on a flat surface using the mini tripod legs. In the ZY Cami app, tap the three dots in the bottom left corner. Tap the gimbal tab and scroll down to auto calibration. Run the calibration, which lasts for a few seconds. For a smartphone gimbal, the Smooth 5 does have an awful lot of buttons and control wheels. And this can be a little bit overwhelming at first. And just to make this gimbal even more complicated, the three apps which support this gimbal all work differently. For example, this means that the wheel currently only pulls focus in the Starcam and Filmic Pro apps, and not the ZY Cami app. But only the ZY Cami app has object tracking. As well, buttons can do different things depending on the app you're using. So as I go through, I'm going to try to cover what each button does in the app. In the end, you probably won't use every button and every feature available, but it's still good to know what's available and what everything does. Now you're ready to go, so power on by pressing and holding the power button, which is at the side here. By the way, you can also check the battery level by tapping the power button. The big red button is the record or shutter button. Depending on whether you are in photo or video mode, pressing this will start recording or take a photo. In the ZY Cami app, if you double press this button, you will switch between front and rear cameras. But in the Starcam app, double pressing this button cycles through the available lenses. But unfortunately, using this method, you cannot change lenses while you're actually recording. Using the ZY Cami app, tap the trigger once to activate tracking. You will see a box appear around any object in the middle of the screen. The gimbal will now try to keep that object in the middle of the frame. In the Starcam app, there is no tracking, so one tap does nothing. But the rest of these trigger functions actually work for both apps. Double tap the trigger to recenter the gimbal. After a shot, especially if you're moving around a lot, you will often find that your smartphone is now in a kind of strange position. So you will probably use this function a lot. Tap the trigger three times and the gimbal rotates around to aim the camera back towards you. So this is useful if you want to film yourself. If you tap the trigger four times, the roll motor moves from the back to the front, and this gives you a clear view of your phone's screen, which might be better for using the selfie camera. Press and hold the trigger to enter what's known as sport mode, and this mode makes the gimbal's motors more responsive to your movement. So, less smooth, but better for following fast-paced action. Modes all work the same, regardless of which app you're using. There's a mode button, and a mode indicator at the top. Tap the mode button once just to cycle through the modes. You will see the mode indicator changing to show you which mode the gimbal is in. Tap the mode button twice to go back to the previous mode. And there are five modes that you can select here. Pan follow, locked, follow, point of view, and vortex. Pan follow mode only follows movements on the pan axis. So that just means any side to side movement. This is good for any shot where you want the horizon to stay level and you don't want the camera to tilt up or down. If we're tracking a subject and we want to keep the person at the same level in the frame during the shot, 
this is a good mode for that. It's also good for crane style shots or any shot where you want the camera to rise and fall but stay pointing in the same direction. In movies, this might be called a jib shot and normally this is done with a piece of kit called a jib arm. In locked mode, all three motors are locked. The gimbal will not follow any of your movements. So you can walk down a street, turn a corner and the gimbal will just stay facing the same way. So if you just want the gimbal to stabilize your camera while it stays facing in one direction, use this mode. For example, if you just want to walk in a straight line and you want the camera to remain fixed in that direction. In follow mode, the gimbal will follow your sideways movements as well as your tilt movements. And this is a good mode for filming an environment like nature or a city and you want to be able to tilt up and down. You can use your arm to bring the camera from the top of a high building or the top of a tree or something tall. And then finally, the camera comes to rest on a subject below. Or you can push in and tilt up to create an interesting angle and an interesting camera movement. When the gimbal is in POV mode or point of view mode, all three motors now respond to your movements. And this means that you can now have the camera rotate on the roll axis. Just roll your wrist as you're filming and the gimbal will turn slowly and smoothly. So when should we use this mode? Obviously, a roll movement is kind of unnatural. We're not really used to seeing the world this way, unless we're, I don't know, on a boat in a stormy sea. You're rarely ever going to see this kind of shot used in a movie or a drama, unless for some kind of special effect. But this mode is good for B-roll shots if you want to add a bit of excitement. So if you're shooting footage for an up-tempo montage for your travel videos, your real estate videos or vlogs, for example, adding this kind of shot can just make the movement a little bit more dynamic. For the viewer, it's a bit more like being on a roller coaster. So it just lifts your sequence above the ordinary. In this mode, you can shoot freestyle, swooping around, turning, twisting, and so on, capturing your surroundings. Imagine a bird flying around. And, you know, a lot of it isn't going to be usable, but what I do is I look through the footage and I pick the best bits from the shot and then I just forget about the rest. Vortex mode allows you to shoot full 360 degree barrel rolls. Again, spin shots are like the POV mode I just talked about. This shot can be used to add an unnatural dynamic to the shot. In vortex mode, hold the gimbal like a flashlight. Now start recording and move slowly forward or backwards. And then push the control stick to the left or right to start the gimbal rolling. The control stick actually has touch sensitivity. So the further you press it, the faster the roll. And you can change the sensitivity in the app as well. Aside from the montage sequences, this shot can also be used for fun transitions. So those are the basic modes. Let's look at more controls. In pan follow or locked mode, you can actually manually reposition the camera with your hand. If I move it and let it go, it just springs back. But if I move it and hold it for two seconds, it now stays in that new position. And this only works on the tilt axis and the pan axis and not the roll axis. On the side, the Smooth 5 has this big wheel with a rubber grip. And this wheel is used in conjunction with the apps to either zoom in or out or to adjust focus manually. Using the Starcam app, this wheel can adjust zoom and focus. Just press the button in the center of the wheel once to switch between zoom and focus. With the ZY Cami or the Starcam app open and connected to the gimbal, turn the wheel and the camera will zoom in and out. You can also use this while you're recording a video, of course. In the ZY Cami app, whether you're recording video or not, you can use the wheel to change lenses. At the bottom, you can see a line of dots with the different cameras represented with larger dots. As it changes cameras, you can see there's a slight jump in the image. In the Starcam app, you can also change lenses with the wheel, but you need to select the auto camera option. And as you turn the zoom wheel at a certain zoom number, it will switch lenses. And this works even when you're recording video. In auto mode, it doesn't tell you which camera you're using, but again, you can see there's a slight jump as the camera changes. But if you don't want it to do this while recording, then just select the device's camera directly. In 
ZY Cami app, there's no way to select a specific rear camera other than with the zoom control, so you can't stop the app changing cameras while you're recording. Either use the wheel or tap the zoom level indicator, which is the circle in the middle at the bottom that opens up the zoom slider and now you can swipe to zoom in and out. In the Starcam app, we have more precise control over which lens is selected. Double tap the record button to cycle through all your device's lenses, or tap the lens picker icon, which is in the top left corner of the screen. The available lenses will appear in a row at the bottom of the screen. Just tap a camera to select. I like the way this picker stays on the screen so that you don't have to keep reopening the lens picker. And this makes switching lenses really easy and fast. Just tap the lens picker button top left again to remove it from the screen. Notice that this button changes depending on the lens that you've selected, so you can easily see which lens you're currently using. You can also zoom in using the Starcam app by tapping the zoom level indicator on the left. A slider appears and you can swipe up and down to zoom in and out. This wheel also manually controls the focus, but only with cameras which allow focus control. And this is usually the main camera and the telephoto camera if you have one. As well, of the Zoom apps, only the Starcam app now allows you to use the wheel for manual focus control. Press the button in the middle of the wheel to switch to manual focus. When you turn the focus wheel, the focus indicator on the right will show a number and you will see this kind of measure graphic scrolling up and down, which is also a slider. The app is now in manual focus mode, so the focus will no longer set automatically. You need to set it with the wheel or by swiping up and down on the slider. In this mode, you can shoot nice focus pulls. A focus pull is used a lot by professionals in dramas and movies, although you might not notice them unless you really do look for them. A focus pull is a reveal shot where you reveal a subject in the frame by bringing it into focus. With a smartphone, you usually need to be pretty close to the foreground object to make this work. So set the focus on the foreground or background, start recording, and slowly adjust the focus using the wheel to move the focus from one object to the other object. Now, if you want to get back to autofocus mode, just tap the screen in the middle somewhere, and you should see the focus meter switch back to the letter A and you will also see these yellow exposure and focus reticles. And more about those later. The menu button does slightly different things depending on which app you're using. Press the menu button when you're using the ZY Cami app to bring up the smart menu. This feature allows you to use preset templates to shoot and automatically edit montage sequences set to music provided by Zuin. You can also access this feature by swiping the menu bar and you just press the menu button again to return to the main screen. In the Starcam app, pressing the menu button is also like a back button. For example, open the footage menu and then just press the menu button to remove it. Open the camera menu, press menu button to remove it. Now let's look at the Smooth 5's other control wheel which is called the selection wheel. Again, the wheel operates slightly differently depending on which app you're using. Firstly, the wheel can be rotated, and this is used to adjust various settings once you've opened them. As well, the wheel acts as four buttons if you press up, down, left, or right, represented by four icons, but kind of like compass points of the wheel, north, south, east, and west. The light bulb button in the center of the wheel acts as a selection button. In both apps, pressing up will open the resolution and frame rate settings. You can use the wheel to navigate to a desired setting and then press the light bulb button to select it. And you can also just tap on the screen and then press the menu button to remove the menu. Pressing right when using the ZY Cami app does nothing. Press right when using the Starcam app and you will open up shutter speed controls. You can see this toggle switch, which switches between auto and manual control. And if you keep pressing right on the wheel, you cycle through three controls, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance. Press the light bulb button to switch between auto and manual. 
and in manual mode, you can now use the wheel to adjust these manual exposure and white balance settings. Press down on the wheel to open up the gallery. And this works the same in both apps. Again, you can use the wheel and the light bulb button to navigate and to select. Pressing left on the wheel when using the ZY Cami app does nothing. Press left on the wheel when using the Starcam app, however, to remove the user interface. So if you want a cleaner screen without distractions, use this feature. Of course, you can also just tap this icon bottom right and just press the menu button to bring back the user interface. On the side of the gimbal is a button marked FN. With the ZY Cami app, this button does nothing. Using Starcam, this button opens the footage menu, which contains various analytical overlays. If you press the FN button five times in a row, it's going to reset the Bluetooth connection between the gimbal and the phone. So sometimes if there are issues with the gimbal connecting to your phone, resetting the Bluetooth can fix that problem. At the back of the gimbal is a USB-C charging port. And when you want to charge the gimbal, use this port. As well, if you need to update the firmware using a computer rather than the app, then you need to connect to your computer using this port. Now, there is a second USB-C port on the tilt motor, and this can be used to charge your mobile using the gimbal's battery. Now, if your phone is mounted horizontally, then you will need to set the phone away from the motor to leave enough space to fit in the charging cable. The question I get most about smartphone gimbals is, does it work with this phone? Does it work with that phone? And usually they're talking about an Android and they want to know if the gimbal will work with their particular model. And the simple answer is yes. Any gimbal will work with almost any smartphone. As long as the phone isn't too heavy, simply mount it and the gimbal will stabilize your mobile while you're filming. But I know that what they're really asking is, does my device work with the app that comes with the gimbal? And the answer to that is a little bit more complicated. Basically, every Android model works differently with third-party camera apps. In general, Android devices have less features than iPhones for every gimbal app that's out there. And even if they do have the same features, they tend to be less reliable. So my advice, unless you want a specific feature from the app, like the focus wheel, for example, I would say to use your native camera app. And another thing that people ask is whether they can use the gimbal with the native camera app of their smartphone. And the answer is absolutely, of course you can. When connected via Bluetooth, Juin says the Smooth 5 is able to control the native phone camera without the ZY Cami or Starcam app. And this function is available with mobile devices which allow you to use the volume button on the phone as a shutter. Just connect your device to the gimbal directly using Bluetooth and when you press the record button on the gimbal, your native camera app will take a photo or start recording. Now, the thing is that that's actually the only control the gimbal has over the app. But you can still change modes using the mode button and see which mode you're in on the indicator. But for all the other controls in your native app, you can just use them as you normally do. In fact, if you don't intend to use the specific features in the gimbal app, I really recommend that you actually just use your device's native app. The thing is that for smooth video, frame rates are really important and you generally get more reliable frame rates with your native app. I actually talk about this in more depth in one of my video lessons for members on Patreon. Now, considering you bought this gimbal to give you smoother video, it would be a bit ironic if the gimbal app then made your video less smooth with unreliable frame rates. Zhiyun Smooth 5 has great axis mobility. The small fold-up gimbals are great for carrying around, but they are often restricted on some axes, especially in the tilt axis. And this extra mobility allows you more flexibility when it comes to shooting crane shots or drone style shots. For these, you'll need some kind of extension handle. Now, you can use a handle extension for gimbals or a selfie stick, 
but I always use this Manfrotto monopod because it's strong. It gives me some other options for shots as well. A crane shot can be a great cinematic establishing shot and they're used in movies all the time. Attach the monopod and extend it to give you the reach you want for the shot. I usually shoot at 60 frames per second in 4K and then slow it to 30 or 24 frames per second when I'm editing. Adding slow motion just makes the shot even smoother. It's not required, but if, you know, if you'd rather have regular motion in the shot. You can start high and drop down, or start low and then raise the camera. A low to high shot reveals the landscape beyond, and the reverse might drop down from a wider shot to frame a closer subject, for example. Either way, these are both actually reveal shots. You can also combine this shot with a push forward or a pull back to add extra cinematic awesomeness. The drone style shot is pretty similar, except you keep the camera at the same level during the shot. Move forward slowly, either in a straight line, or you can add a subtle pan movement. Try to keep your knees bent in that ninja walk style to reduce the up and down movement from your footsteps to make it more drone-like. One of the most commonly overused shots is a pan shot, and they're pretty boring and not often used in movies because they're just not very cinematic. Instead of rotating from a static position, a more cinematic shot is to move the camera in a straight line. And this is called a dolly shot. And if we try to do this with our gimbal, it's almost impossible to stop the up and down wobbles. You know, our arms are not machines. And unfortunately, we don't have the fourth axis shock absorber like a Steadicam does which removes that up and down movement. But this is where the monopod can come in and help you out. Extend the monopod to the ground to remove the up and down wobbles. Start recording and move the camera from side to side. Now this shot looks best if you have something in the foreground. There is a little bit of up and down movement because there's a natural curve as you go from side to side. But the main thing is that it's smooth, which looks professional, rather than wobbly, which doesn't really look professional. Another use for the monopod is for steadier focus pulls. When you're pulling focus from one subject to another, if you're holding the gimbal in your hands, again, it's very hard not to wobble up and down. But using the monopod rested on the ground, and now you have a perfectly stable focus pull shot. Of course, you could also use a tripod. I just find it easier to carry a monopod around. And like I say, you can use this monopod for all these other shots as well. So it's really a great all-purpose tool to go with your gimbal. So what are the main differences between the ZY Cami app and the Starcam app? The ZY Cami app is less focused on the serious filmmaking features that the Starcam app has. And on the right of the screen, there is a menu of main modes. There's the regular video and photo modes. Next, there is Pano, which takes a series of photos eight in total, and then stitches them all together into one photo for a very wide view. Now you can choose a 180 degree or a 240 degree panorama. If you select the grid icon, it creates a composite photo for a wider view, which comes out a kind of normal shape. So it's probably more useful for sharing, you know, with people and social media and stuff. The icon with the three people in it allows you to shoot a clone photo. And that's where the subject appears multiple times in the same photo. There's also slow motion, and then we have the dolly zoom effect. Then there's time lapse, which allows you to program a moving time lapse as well. And finally, there's hyperlapse, and hyperlapse is when the camera moves and everything is speeded up. So let's look at the other end of the menu. And here we've got AI Live for live streaming and Smart. And this final mode allows you to shoot a montage sequence set to music where it walks you through each shot and it cuts it all together for you. Adding effects, color, music, and transitions. Here's a little feature that you might not know about. You can actually switch to the Starcam directly from the ZY Cami app. Just tap the three dots, select the general tab, and tap Pro Mode. If you have the Starcam app installed, it will switch to it. Now, you can't actually switch back to the ZY Cami app in a similar way. Starcam is similar to many third-party camera apps, where it allows you manual control over your smartphone. As well, the app allows you to manually control focus with the zoom focus wheel. 
tap the screen and you get this yellow circle and a square with a number in the middle and an exposure slider on the right. And these are reticles which control exposure and focus. Swipe the slider to set an adjustment to the exposure. Exposure is still going to be set automatically, but it's adjusted up or down by the amount represented by this number. Tap where the number is just to lock this in place and just tap again to unlock. To reset this value, just tap anywhere in the screen after you've unlocked it. Now, if you tap and drag from the center of the reticles, you actually separate them out. The circle is for exposure and the square is for focus. Set focus by moving the focus reticle to the subject you want to focus on. And that's the same with the exposure reticle. Tapping the center of either reticle locks both. If you switch to manual exposure, where you set shutter speed and ISO manually, the exposure reticle disappears. And then you're just left with the focus reticle. And if you switch to manual focus, the focus reticle also disappears. In the center at the bottom, you can see there is a rectangle containing a histogram, which basically helps you with exposure. And you can just swipe there to choose between four different versions. To the right of that is the audio level meter. If your camera is receiving audio, you will see the levels jumping up and down. However, as yet, there are no audio controls within the Starcam app, so there's no way to actually control this level or to select different mics or anything like that. Tap the LUT button to open up a LUT menu. Swipe along the menu to choose a LUT. There's quite a few to choose from here, including plenty of different log profiles. Now, if a LUT has a P symbol, like this one, or in fact anything else within the app, if it has this P symbol, then that means they are only for paying subscribers, I'm afraid. So other features, so there's other features for subscribers, which include analytics overlays, focus peaking, as well as the grids and the guides. YouTube is great. It's a great way to share information. It's great for creators. It's great for viewers. The only downside is that the priority of YouTube isn't either creators or viewers. It's the advertisers. And that's why I really love Patreon, because there are no advertisers involved. It's a place where we can share ideas without advertisers getting in the way. Um, so you're not ever going to see any adverts on my Patreon page and you can join for free and there's plenty of videos there. I'm actually doing more and more stuff on Patreon because it's actually more enjoyable in some ways to create for a smaller audience but one where we're not dominated by this algorithm which is, uh, you know, there are tricks to get views with the algorithm and if you don't play those tricks and you don't play those games, you don't get the views. You don't necessarily get recommended the best content, the most educational content. Really, all you're getting recommended is the content which best fires the algorithm and then starts the algorithm pushing that information to you, whether it's any use to you or not. YouTube doesn't actually care. All YouTube really cares about is getting as many eyeballs watching its advertisers' videos as possible. It doesn't care whether people are giving you the wrong information. So if you come over to Patreon, because there's no advertisers involved, you know that you're just gonna get straightforward information. There's not gonna be any nonsense. And also I can chat more freely with you there. Uh, it's actually easier. So come on over.